Hi, phys ed students. Um, I am attempting your section three homework video. Um, I have fired my cameraman who was moving around quite a bit, so I hope the last video didn't make you um, a little motion sick. Um, so the last section we were talking about series in parallel and series in, um, Oh, I'm sorry, resistors and series and resistors in parallel. And um, this time we're going to look at circuits that have both. Um, are most circuits encountered in real life composed of only resistors in series or only resistors in parallel? Of course not. Most circuits that you encounter in your life are going to be composed of both resistors in series and resistors in parallel. Um, so for example here, we have uh, maybe an outlet fuse for a resistor in your home. Um, what would happen is, is in your house, a circuit breaker is connected in series to numerous outlets. The outlets themselves are wired in parallel to one another. Um, they want these to be wired in parallel so that you don't have to have each appliance on for the other appliances to get power. So um, uh, this way they all have, and in addition, this way they all operate off the same potential difference, either 120 in the United States or 220 in Europe. So to prevent excessive current, the circuit breaker is wired in series with outlets. So if the current gets too high and is going to you know, hurt appliances, um, it flips and that's sometimes what happens and you have to go and you have to flip, flip your circuit breaker. Um, so this is a drawing of a typical outlet and say, I mean, this would obviously be in a kitchen. So you have your, your potential difference source and it comes into this outlet, which we have three plugs in parallel with a microwave, a blender, and a toaster. And then you finish the circuit out. Here's our circuit breaker in case current gets too high. Um, so take this time to copy down what maybe a common uh, circuit would look like in your home. Um, so the key to this arrangement is that if one appliance is off, we can still use our other outlets and other appliances. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have multiple resistors in complex circuits, and we're going to have to simplify these problems. Um, we have to uh, group them into things that we can we can solve. So we're going to group kind of outlets that are in series. We're going to add those resistances and then we'll group things that are in parallel like this, find the equivalent resistance and set that in as kind of a single resistor. So we're going to combine resistors in series and we're going to combine resistors in parallel, um, kind of redraw our circuit, reanalyze it until we finally end up with an equivalent resistance. Okay, so that brings us to number five, which is our example problem, and we're determining the equivalent resistance of the complex circuit shown. So in this, within this complex circuit, we have um, our, volt, our potential difference, our voltage source, and then we have several resistors. Um, it, when you're looking at this, it actually really helps to redraw this um, circuit kind of linearly without our voltage, just these first few times when we're getting used to it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start here, we're gonna redraw linearly. So we first come to our three volt, or I'm sorry, three ohm resistor, then our six ohm resistor, and then we hit our parallel ones. So we have six ohms plus two ohms up here, and then our one ohm resistor down here. And then we have our other resistor here in parallel. So you wanna redraw this circuit kind of linearly so it helps you to, to really see what you have going on in your complex um, resistors. So, um, make sure you label everything correctly. 
get it all out here. Um, and the last one is one ohm. Okay, once you have this done, now we're gonna look at what we can combine simply. I'm gonna start with things that are in series and will be easy to combine. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to combine these resistors and these resistors. Now they're in series. So how do I combine resistors in series? We have to remember that. So because they are in series, they simply add their resistances. So I'm gonna come in and three plus six is nine ohms and six and two is eight, eight ohms. And then I'm gonna combine those. So I'm gonna combine these series resistors and redraw. Okay, so I'm gonna redraw these um, with these combined. So I'm gonna start here on the end. I'm going to have one, my uh, combined resistor. And then my, cir my circuit continues. And then I come up here, I've got my, my parallel, and then I have my other combined resistor. I have my resistor down here. That's my four ohm resistor. And then I finally have my final one of one ohm. So I'm gonna label all my resistances in. And because I combine these, I know I have eight ohms up here, nine ohms down here. Um, I have four ohms here and one ohm here. Now, this almost looks like I could just add, but we have one problem. We're gonna want to take now, we're gonna want to combine these resistors that are here in parallel. So our second step is going to be combine parallel resistors and redraw. Okay, so we're gonna recombine these parallel resistors and then I'm gonna redraw my circuit again. So I really know what I'm looking at. So how do we combine resistors in parallel? Remember, this is our reciprocal relationship where we have one over our equivalent resistance is equal to one over R1 plus one over R2 which gives us our equivalent resistance is equal to one over one over R1 plus one over R2. Now, <clears throat> let's put some numbers in and figure this out. One over an eighth plus a quarter. You put that in your calculator and you end up with um, two and two thirds. So our equivalent resistance is 2.7 ohms for our parallel um, circuit there. So once again, it, now we're going to redraw our circuit. So we come in with our we have a nine ohm resistor and then the equivalent resistor of these is now 2.7 ohms. And then we have our one ohm resistor. Okay, so we have nine ohms, 2.7 ohms and one ohm. Now it looks like we have three resistors that are simply in series. What are we going to do now with them? We're simply going to add them. So nine plus one plus 2.7, um, that will give us an, a, to a total equivalent resistance. Um, we have our REQ of our three series, nine plus one plus 2.7, that gives us a total equivalent resistance of 12.7 ohms, okay? That's it, okay? The most important part of these problems is really understanding what you're looking at and simplifying correctly. 
It doesn't really necessarily matter what order you go in because we are adding primarily, um, which is commutative, meaning we could kind of go in a different order and still get the same thing. But I think this was a pretty simple way. What I'm going to ask you to do next is to set up problem six. Um, I will help you set up problem 6A. You're gonna enter your answer for A, B, and C in to the video, and then um, we'll continue on. Okay, this is problem six in like the resistances that they tell you for part A. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is actually label your resistances and redraw your circuit linearly like we did in the last problem. So I'm gonna start with RA coming in here. Um, so you have, so if we started here, we see we have RA, and then what actually happens is we have two parallel circuits R in RB and RC, or resistors. So here's one, and then we can come down and have the other one. Um, so this is really what our uh, example looks like if we were to redraw linearly. We have 25 ohms here. We have three ohms here and 40 ohms here. Um, so the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is combine your parallel resistors into an equivalent resistance and redraw. So we're gonna have REQ for these, which is one over one over three plus one over 40 which will give us a resistance that is smaller than our smallest resistor, which is in this case 2.8 ohms. So then we redraw with our resist. So we still have RA as is, and then this is the equivalent resistance of this entire grouping. So we put it in as a separate resistor and we end up with 25 ohms here and 2.8 ohms here. Added combined gives us a total equivalent resistance of 27.8 ohms. Um, so now in your problem, you're going to do parts B and C that have our different values for resistors A, B, and C. You're gonna enter those values into this program as a way for me to check. Um, and then we will start, this will be the end of our first video and we will start the second video on figuring out once we know our equivalent resistances, how are we going to find the current and the velocity, or I'm sorry, the current and the voltage or potential differences across the entire circuit and across individual resistors.